Okay, so now let's talk about our, our breakout. So we're going to discuss first discuss our board side breakout. But in doing so, we need to really just re, uh, recap our sagging zone defensive coverage and then transitioning from the sagging zone uh, defensive coverage to our board side breakout. And defensemen, you are um, the architects of all of this. And I'm going to show you a few things in here that are going to um, hopefully um, simplify things for you and also give you um, time to actually make a really good decision and initiate a, a breakout um, in a coordinated fashion. So let's just um, let's go through this. So we're going to first talk about our sagging zone, our sagging zone coverage. We can see our right winger over here, uh, strong side. The puck has been dumped into this corner. So strong side winger. Um, she's well positioned so that she can actually intercept a pass if this person uh, one thing I should mention too is that the blue X's are the offensive players and the orange circles are are us okay so the blue X uh, if she wins the battle and she tries to pass the puck back uh, our right wingers in a great position to intercept that pass as well as she tries to go cross ice to the, the to the far side point man or the the weak side point man with an active stick, she can at least inter uh, she can deflect that pass and potentially intercept it if she if uh, if it's read um, cleanly. So, and then we've got our our um, sag person right here, our sag man. Um, so she plays lower in the zone, um, high to mid slot, and this weak side winger here, she's the emergency person. So. Uh, if, if there's a breakdown in our end in some way and uh, there's an open player, um, our emergency person needs to step in and get between that player and the net. Okay, so very important. Uh, you need to watch the play and, uh, and uh, jump in and help out um, in this particular area right in, right in here, this, this whole upper middle slot area, as well as um, watching this point man. So if the puck gets back to her somehow you need to get out there as well okay so and then we have our um, our weak side defenseman down low covering the slot uh, low slot area and our center as well um, sliding in and taking the position of the strong side defenseman um, covering the lower slot and and maybe this player so we can see that we have an offensive attack that's kind of in a, a an attack triangle a traditional tra attack triangle scenario. So um, our center is going to have to watch this player right here in this case. So now let's talk about transitioning. Uh, again, like I said, the defenseman, you are basically the architects of our breakout. And you'll, you'll see here, I've highlighted this green area. So this is what, what uh, we're referring to as the quiet area. So this is typically an area of the ice that no one is going to be there unless the puck is there. Okay, so what you can use this for is when you gain control of the puck, instead of actually ping-ponging the puck back up and down the boards, you know, you'll, you'll always hear um, parents and everybody yelling, get the puck out, get the puck out, and you just panic and try and shoot the puck up the boards. Well, let's try and have a bit more composure. And if we take it to this quiet area where there, nobody is there, that gives us an opportunity to think about what we're going to do with the puck. Okay, so we want to make an intelligent decision with the puck because shooting it up and down the boards this way isn't doing any anyone any good. And it might actually squirt out right into the slot where somebody could get a, a the other team could have a, a great scoring opportunity. So let's keep control of the puck. Let's skate behind, let's start skating to the quiet area. Okay, and in this case, let's just say that this person is uh, she's she's situated so she's actually uh, applying pressure from behind okay so if she's applying pressure from behind well she can just skate right through uh, you know our goalies for instance our goalie can actually let the person know our, our defenseman here she can let the defenseman know that she's uh, pressuring from behind man on man on from behind so once you hear that you know that you can go over to the other side okay when we see the other side we curve up we want this player to curve up a bit, okay? This way, we curve up, so potentially freeze the D on this side, and then we start our breakout, okay? So it's a great way to transition our breakout. All right, okay? So that's a great way you can actually transition it. 
and then we start our breakout. Um, left winger skates over this way, gets the puck. The right winger um, will come up this way. Okay, we want you to skate down a little bit further. So right winger here, you're not going to leave the zone. You're not going to uh, start leaving the zone until we've actually maintained control of the puck over here. Okay, these guys are likely going to switch shift over. Okay, if they don't shift over too fast, you can see where if this person gets the puck and she takes a couple seconds and has a look, well, she might actually have a free breakaway pass to this player. Okay. Um, or if that pass is taken away, this, this D should actually come back this way. So that this D moving back will effectively take away that, that long stretch pass. But then our center will come in through this way and start skating up and providing an option as well. So then all of a sudden, because this, this player here has moved up based on the actions of our weak side winger, she's pulled back. That's left the whole middle of the ice open for us to have a nice clean breakout through the center. Okay, so you can see where we need to, we need to react to what our, what our opponents are doing and what our teammates are doing. If we all understand that this is the type of breakout that we're going to execute, um, everybody can react and, and exit the, uh, the zone in an orderly fashion with control of the puck. Okay, so now let's talk about this, this D winning the battle. Okay, and then she's going to go start skating back to the quiet area. Okay, but now the pressure, let's just say the pressure uh, is coming from the inside shoulder. Again, we're going to let her know man on inside shoulder man on inside shoulder that should tell us and unless this d is uh, unless we're really fast skaters and we can outskate this this particular winger um the a great evasion technique is just to take the puck into the quiet area this person's going to follow you right into that quiet area and let me I just got one half of her that person's going to take you follow you right into that quiet area and then just do a quick little button hook Okay, and we're going to practice button hooks so that everybody can do them. And we're going to come in, quick little button hook. And then, now our right winger here is going to come down, it's going to go up. Just like how the, the weak side winger, when she transitioned over to a breakout, I wanted her to go up and around to try and freeze the D. Same thing here. You want to, you want to go up towards it and then freeze this D. So this D, at worst case, is she's going to think that, uh oh, she's moving, she's going out of the zone. So you might actually get this D to start skating backwards. Best case is, is she's just not going to move and you're going to have time down here. So when you receive the pass, she's not going to pinch down the boards because you've frozen her. Okay. So basically up and around this D, that our D has actually done a reverse and we've uh, picked it out into the... Uh, uh, the half boards for a, a perfect breakout. Okay, so now, again, this guy, this winger over here needs to go and do our cross zone loop. Once she sees that we've actually gained control of the puck over here, we need her to go, right? So, again, if this doesn't, if they don't move back, this player doesn't move back, we have a nice long stretch pass out, right? Like right in for a breakaway. Um, and if she does move back, then it's the same that we just talked about on the other side, where the center is going to loop through, and we've got the whole middle of the ice open. Okay, and then we can do the pass up to the center and follow our breakout. Okay, so now let's just talk a second about I'm just going to situate our winger right here with the puck and get rid of this line so we don't we don't see it so it's not as confusing let's just talk about well maybe there's a player back here a bit so she's kind of blocking our clear pass to the center but this right winger or our strong side winger still has lots of time with the puck well if the center actually skates to this open area and we know that this is going to happen okay the center starts skating to the open area. Right wingers, you just need to 
skate a little instead of just trying to skate up the boards this way and and like right at the d skate out a little bit and what you'll end up doing is you're effectively going to pull this d across because they're going to have to react to you trying to go up the ice through the middle and all you need to do is get her to pull out about 30 centimeters off the boards and then you can do a quick little bounce pass out to our center who's breaking in behind them okay so it's that little subtle movement along with you know this movement here pulls the d back um, this little movement here pulls the d out so we can open up our space okay this movement here uh, drags them in and then we can actually reverse and and uh, and get the puck out this way so again it's it's um it's it's making those those little movements to buy ourselves some time so we can actually make a really intelligent decision with the puck okay now let's talk about a couple of different coverages that can happen when the other the uh, the opposing team is forechecking us so a typical one well we said we've seen the 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 one-on-one -on -one. another typical one is is that they'll do a, 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 a two a two one two attack where you actually have two people um, skate in to try and um, run the forecheck leaving another person up here somewhere okay so in that case if this D is pressured with two people and and she gets the puck well because it's a four check our center hasn't had time to react our left D right here can actually just step down our weak side D can step down and actually just yell for a pass and we can do a quick D to D pass she doesn't even really need to take it um, take the puck to the quiet zone she can just do a straight pass right from here you know a quick little bounce pass off the back of the boards or something like that Okay, and then once the D over here has the uh, uh, has control of the puck, we can initiate our breakout um, with our left winger swooping over, and then our our pass out. Okay, and then some some kid, well, some teams might actually recognize that we're stepping back to do this D to D pass, so they might do a uh, um, a wide attack where this second player is actually with our D. And when that happens, if our D steps back and this player comes in with her, she's got to call that pass off. Okay, so that pass needs to be called off. And what we're, what we're going to end up doing is the center with the right winger gets the puck or the, um, the strong side defenseman gets the puck. She can start carrying it back to the quiet zone. And then she can either do her reverse or... Just do a quick little bounce pass because she's going to drag this player with her. And if the center recognizes this, we can do a quick little bounce pass where our center can actually go pick that puck up. And initiate the, and initiate the breakout that way. Okay. So again, we need to read this and, and react to it. You can see right here if the if we've got those three players on that side of the ice and we've got control of the puck over here we're well situated to get a breakout um, so we just need to control that pass have a nice crisp pass up or the center may actually just initiate the breakout with her, by herself and again this might be um, the center in here and the right d actually moving over to scoop up that pass it really depends on um, how this this play transpires down in the in the corner and and who actually gains control of the puck okay so basically we've covered uh our sagging zone defensive coverage we've covered um transitioning and and the d uh trying to take that puck to the quiet area to buy yourself some time and and really assess the situation and and make a uh an intelligent decision on our on our breakouts and and base and all of our little movements and decoy movements to stretch out the stretch out the opposing players and make them commit to something so that we can counteract that commitment 
with um, by going to the open space and passing the puck to the open space.